Good Tuesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside that weather window where once again a beautiful late January winter day all across north central Washington. As we take a look at our Wenatchee Heights camera provided by SkyFi down at the Wenatchee Valley, look at that beautiful day that we had today. Lots of blue sky out there and uh, we will continue to see this type of weather at least for another day or two. Things will begin to change on Thursday, but before that, expect dry weather. We will see highs basically in the upper 30s for us here in the Wenatchee area to around 40. Lows won't quite be in the high teens and low 20s, mainly middle 20 for us here, but still some fog in the morning, then sunshine in the afternoon before a storm system moves our way, but that's not going to be until late Thursday and into Friday. We'll talk much more about that storm and your complete weather forecast a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. A Rock Island man accused in the July beating death of his wife will be represented by a new defense attorney at his March murder trial. An East Wenatchee man is in the Chelan County Regional Justice Center tonight after a failed robbery attempt at the Grant Road Food and Fuel Store in East Wenatchee. And the Wenatchee School Board has a list of candidates it wants to interview for the district superintendent job. But first we begin tonight a trial for a man charged with murdering a Quincy woman in 2016 started Monday in a Grant County courtroom with jury selection. Gustavo, Gustavo Tapia Rodriguez faces multiple charges in the death of 31-year-old Jill Sunberg, whose bullet-riddled body was found December 22, 2016, along the old Vantage Highway. Authorities say she'd been kidnapped from a residence at a Highway 283 trailer park, Two confidants pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and will testify for the prosecution as part of their plea agreements. Grant County Prosecutor Garth Dano says opening arguments are slated to begin Friday in Afreda. The case has attracted national attention because the suspects are all illegal immigrants and suspected members of the Mexican drug cartel. A Rock Island man accused in the July beating death of his wife will be represented by a new defense attorney at his March murder trial. 68-year-old 68 68 Uli Tialulu had asked the court in a letter to replace his court-appointed lawyer, John Bueller, because he did not believe Bueller had his best interest as a priority. The court granted the request and appointed Jeffrey Barker to the case. Tia Lilo has pleaded not guilty to killing his wife Peggy at the couple's travel trailer, where they lived. An East Wenatchee man is in the Chelan County Regional Justice Center tonight after a failed robbery attempt early Monday morning. It was at the Grant Road Food and Fuel Store in East Wenatchee. Around 2.30 a.m., 37-year-old Benjamin V. Buckles told the cashier at the convenience store that he had a gun and would shoot the cashier if he didn't follow his orders. Erratic behavior followed as Buckles then bought a pack of cigarettes, told the cashier to call the police, went to the bathroom and returned once again threatening the cashier with a gun. Buckles then left the store empty-handed and told East Wenatchee police he had, quote, chickened out, unquote. Police believed he was under the influence of drugs and later found a small container of methamphetamine inside Buckles' jacket. He also told police he had a gun, which turned out to be a black plastic rat. Buckles is uh, charged rather with first-degree attempted robbery and possession of methamphetamine. Well, the Wenatchee School Board has a list of candidates it wants to interview for the district superintendent job. The board and HYA, its consulting firm, narrowed the list of applicants down last week and will hold the first round of interviews February 4th and the 5th. How many people they'll interview and their names is not being released and the first interviews will be in closed session. Later rounds of interviews will be public. HYA had wanted the district uh, in late, warned rather the district in late December that some candidates were shying away from applying because of concerns about the current school board. Well, coming up next, plans to establish a multi-agency emergency operations center in the Wenatchee area have changed. There appears to be bipartisan support in the legislature that makes it easier to prosecute police who use deadly force and the owners of the Gorge Amphitheater say a new music event to replace the popular Sasquatch Festival is in the works. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. At Local Myth 
pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Eastern Washington. It's a great place to call home and a great time to own a home. It's the ideal place to lay down roots for your family and your future. Giza Credit Union thinks Eastern Washington is a great place to own a home, too. That's why we offer all kinds of home loans with personal attention every step of the way. We're your home. For home loans, we're Giza Credit Union. Antique Mall at Cashmere wishes you a happy and prosperous new year. With 15,000 square feet to explore, Antique Mall at Cashmere has something for everyone. For repurposing projects, do-it-yourselfers, and those with a keen eye for making something old, fresh, and new again, this is the place to find your next project. Antique Mall at Cashmere, their friendly staff is here to help you. Stop on by today. In another news, plans to establish a multi-agency emergency operations center in the Wenatchee area have been changed. $1.2 million in state funding was awarded last year to Chelan County to develop the facility at Old Station, but Sheriff Brian Burnett says that property was determined to be too expensive. That's where Wenatchee Valley College entered the picture. I believe they're the ones that approached our staff and said, hey, what do you think about this? Uh, and after talking further and sitting down and talking with some of our commissioners uh, and our staff thought that actually it's not a bad fit. It may be a great partnership. And again, uh, would the state allow us to do that? Um, uh, and again, so we'll see. We're going to push on and, and hopefully we, we don't want to have to give that money back. We want to utilize it. At the same time, we don't want to build something that's only going to be halfway there and we'll never be able to, to finalize it. That would be a waste of state money. And again, so hopefully we'll find that middle ground and something that will work to complete this emergency operations center. The facility is to be developed as a regional command base for fire and law enforcement during major disasters that occur in Chelan, Douglas, Grant, Okanagan, and Kittitas counties. Most of all, we can go back on a, a couple years back in the, in the massive fires that we had. And I think as you look down into Southern California this year to say um, under certain wind and fire events, it could be tragic loss of life. And so an emergency operations center allows us to um, basically bring in uh, the resources and have a place to um, uh, stash it on a to staff it on a technological side of it um, where we can run our resources back and forth, communications uh, for the incident command side of things, and we can implement and communicate at a much faster and uh, lifetime situation. Burnett tells NCW Life News that he's working with the state to extend the time required to use the grant funding for the possible new location. Well, there appears to be bipartisan support in the legislature for a measure that refines a voter approved initiative that makes it easier to prosecute police who use deadly force. The intent of the revisions is to make the changes that had already been agreed to by all parties prior to I-940's passage. Prior to the initiative's passage, state law required that prosecutors prove that officers acted with malice to hold them criminally liable and a standard that critics argued was impossible to meet. Chelan County Sheriff Brian Burnett explains some of those changes. Also, we wanted some things that, that actually put the pressure back on the agencies to say, are you training your people properly in the use of force and de-escalation, whether it be crisis intervention, dealing with mentally ill and different persons like that. So a lot of different things that we wanted to bring into it, say it needs to put some of the responsibility, most of the responsibility back on the individual agencies. But again, how do we hold those individual agencies in a state uh, perspective uh, responsible for that? Um, some of the other things that it will, uh, will bring, 
uh, will be independent shooting reviews uh, when the use of force is used like that and we have a, uh, uh, a loss of life. Um, that's something we're already set up here in Chelan County. So most of the things that, that either one of these bills is going to bring is not going to highly affect uh, Chelan County or our local agencies if they're already training properly. And that's something Chelan County Sheriff's Office is currently doing. Sheriff Burnett participating in drafting the changes as a member of the Washington State Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs. The new bill is passed out of the House and is expected to be approved by the Senate before heading to the governor's desk for his approval. Well, the Sasquatch Music Festival has been a fixture in the Pacific Northwest as a home to artists and musicians from all walks. 2018 saw the festival's final edition, though, and now Live Nation is looking to fill that old void at the Gorge Amphitheater. It's unclear what Live Nation's new festival will entail, but it will provide fans with zero downtime between the end of Sasquatch 2018 and Memorial Day weekend this year. In a news release, Live Nation said, quote, details will follow in the weeks to come, but put it in your calendars. May 24th, 25th, and 26th, 2019 will see a new generation of contemporary artists carry on to tra tra tradition at this iconic Northwest institution, unquote. The Sasquatch Festival has provided the Northwest with diverse lineups since 2002, featuring artists like The Cure, Modest Mouse, Robert Plant, Outkast, Foo Fighters, Nine Inch Nails, and many more. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. Since 1932, Camp Seneca, nestled on the beautiful shores of Lake Wenatchee, has provided children grades 1 through 12 with the ideal location for kids to learn new skills, have fun, and make friends while creating memories that will last a lifetime. Camp Seneca's rustic log cabins and their staff serve to provide each group a unique summer camp experience. Register for Camp Seneca today, www.campfirencw.org. Everything we do is about delivering very high quality care and keeping our patients safe. We really work as a team here and so that's really what makes it worthwhile. I give 100% every day and I do that because I work for a company that I believe gives 100% back to me. The bottom line is we genuinely care about our employees. It is the most incredible place to work and you will be inspired every day. Thanks to the help I received at Goodwill. I have a job. I'm looking now. Thanks to Goodwill. Thank you, Goodwill. Thank, Thank you, Goodwill. Goodwill. Thank, Thank you, Goodwill. Goodwill. Thank, Thank you, Goodwill. Thank you, Goodwill. Goodwill's Employment Connection Center is a free walk-in job search assistance program designed to get you back to work. When you donate to or shop at Goodwill, you're really helping people find work. Thank you. Goodwill, there's more behind this door. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. The Women's Resource Center will be building new homeless housing units at the Parkside Crisis Stabilization Center this summer, in addition to the 15 units already on the property. In tonight's feature story, Executive Director Laurel Turner tells us more. As of 2018, our severity of homelessness per capita was second only to King County. And it's, that's a huge lift for a small community and so we need all the help we can get so we need to get that story out there and let people know that doesn't mean we have as many homeless people it just means for our community size we were very severely impacted so we applied twice to the housing trust fund to get funded to add 20 more units out at our uh, permanent supportive housing at Parkside and uh, we were turned down and then we had a beautiful debriefing with Housing Trust Fund and we described and we found out they had some misperceptions about what we wanted to do. So they really encouraged us to come back to the table and so we did and we were awarded three million dollars from Housing Trust Fund and then seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars from the uh, Federal Home Loan Bank and that sounds like a bank but it's 
it's, it's a grant, it's not a loan, although there will be some combination of uh, federal funds, housing trust fund, and the Federal Home Loan Bank, and it could be a combination of grant and a loan, we're not sure yet, a low interest loan, how it'll come to us. But anyway, it, it, we're fully funded at that point. So we can build our 20 units, uh, we're leasing the, the ground under the units from the city of Wenatchee, we have their support, and um, we'll probably hopefully break ground in July. It's out at the old Parkside Nursing Home, which um, was given to the city of Wenatchee, and they lease about 25% of that building to us, and the other 75% is leased to the ABHS, the new behavioral health group. And so we have 15 units there now, and we have folks housed out there who were chronically homeless, uh, with a mental health disorder and who earn less than 30% of the area median income. And that will be similar to the criteria for the new 20, except that the disability doesn't need to be mental health, it could be anything. So we have five of our units set aside as fully ADA. Right now, a person who's wheelchair bound and homeless, there is no shelter that can take them in. We have to put them in a motel, uh, there's, or they end up staying in the hospital for weeks and weeks on end if they have a procedure or something. So we're really hopeful that we can maybe, you know, partner with the, the hospital to set aside a room or two for respite care uh, so that people don't have to end up in the hospital for 70, 80 days. Uh, if the numbers are right and we have about 21 unsheltered homeless individuals left, that means we pretty much house everybody. Um, it's, it's not super rapid, we, we always kind of take our time because it's difficult for a person who's been chronically homeless for a year or more to move inside and adapt and adjust. Uh, this is also housing first, so it doesn't, uh, uh, there is no criteria for clean and sober. So a person who's using can live there, but we monitor them so it's harm reduction housing. So adapting to all that just takes time. So we'll slowly fill it up and um, the folks that we have out at Parkside right now, some have been there for the entire four years it's been open. And these were people who previously couldn't remain housed for weeks. You know, it just never worked. But it takes great case management. I have, along with Victor, I have a whole team of people who will just do whatever it takes. That's our sort of our motto, whatever it takes to keep them housed. And if that means we need to tap on their door every day and check on them, that's what we'll do. If it means we need to leave them alone and let them come to us, that's what we'll do. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. And like we do every day, let's start off by taking a look at what we saw this afternoon outside our weather window. And what a gorgeous shot this is from our Wenatchee Heights SkyFi Tower camera. You can see the Columbia River with Wenatchee and East Wenatchee and all that beautiful blue sky out there. We saw plenty of it today. But one thing you'll also, also notice, where's the snow? We're just not seeing any snow so far this year. Basically, we've had two snowstorms this entire year with about three to four inches each. And that's been about it, at least for Wenatchee proper. I know there's a little bit more in the upper elevations, but I think most of us will take this kind of day for late January in the middle of winter. Uh, high temperatures today, a little bit above normal. In fact, just like yesterday, we were exactly the same at about 40 degrees today, 21. It was a cool start to the morning. We should be at about 26 for our low and 37 for our normal high temperature. 53 was our record high back in 19. 74 and once again for the second consecutive day our record low was in 1969 this time at nine below zero still at a little bit over eight tenths of an inch of moisture for the year sunrise now at around 7 30 and sunset at around five o'clock let's take a look at now what we can expect as we finish off our work week and get into the upcoming weekend tonight at 10 o'clock once again, we could see some fog developing here in north central Washington. It will get chilly once again overnight with our clear skies off and on in, intermixed with that fog. As we move into Wednesday at 1 in the afternoon, mostly sunny skies 
It's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow as well. Calm, a little bit cooler tomorrow. I'm not sure if we'll make the 40-degree mark or not tomorrow, but all in all, still a pretty nice day. By Thursday at 1 o'clock, our next area of storminess comes sliding down the west coast of British Columbia. That'll bring us some increasing clouds throughout the afternoon. We will be nice in the upper 30s, but then by 10 o'clock, uh, we'll see cloudy skies and about a 30 per chance, chance that we'll see some rain and snow mix as this big, deep trough begins to develop all along the west coast and it just keeps digging south on Friday and that'll bring us an even better chance for rain, about a 70 percent chance during the day on Friday. We'll stay on the cloudy sky. Temperature's not too bad though, around 40 degrees and then as we move into the weekend on Saturday, partly cloudy skies maybe an isolated shower or two just because of all this activity out in the Pacific could throw just little pockets of moisture our way on Saturday and that will pretty much be the same scenario for Sunday even though we will see a little more developed band of showers especially in the Cascades rain and snow are possible about a 30 percent chance on your Super Bowl Sunday that's why I picked 3 p.m. start time to the game I believe is around 3:20 or 3:30. so just hunker down and enjoy that game things will be a little bit wet on Sunday afternoon. Let's take a look now at your quick lube and tune forecast. Tonight, it will be another cool one. Not quite as 21 degrees, our cool spot this morning. 25 overnight tonight, 37 tomorrow, a little bit of fog in the morning, and then mostly sunny skies. More fog for Thursday morning, partly cloudy in 39. And then we we'll stay at about 39 degrees for a rainy Friday. Cloudy and a 70% chance of rain. Things get a little bit better, though, as we move into the upcoming weekend, Saturday's weather. And Sunday, mostly cloudy, isolated showers for Saturday, a better chance for some rain on Sunday, 40 for Saturday, 39 on Sunday. And as we move into Monday, mostly cloudy skies, isolated showers with highs then around 37. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Family roles change with time. You may find yourself being an unpaid caregiver to a loved one. Caregiving can be rewarding, but also stressful. Taking care of yourself is vital. Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington has low or no cost services for unpaid caregivers, such as in-home support, care supplies, and counseling. Connect in your local area by calling Aging and Adult Care at 800-572-4459 and mention you're interested in caregiver support. Are you watching me? If you're watching me and you are a business owner in North Central Washington, your potential customers could be seeing your TV commercial right now. With Solely on Broadcasting, TV advertising is effective and affordable. Place your ads on the network best suited to your potential customers or get top of mind awareness with 16 cable networks, including NCW Life, your local TV channel. Give Solely on Broadcasting a call at 888-2020 today to see how easy and affordable it is to advertise on TV. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life channel. And a happy Tuesday to you. Now, Brooklyn, New York seems a world away from Chelan, Washington. But this is the home for Joey Harris. Oh, excuse me. He's called Joe now. Or if you're his teammates on the New Jersey or Brooklyn Nets, he's known as Joey Buckets or Lumber Joe for his beard or even Beef Jerky Joe. Whatever you call him, he you need to call him a starter for the Nets who's averaging over 13 points a game on a surprise team in the Eastern Conference. The New York Times featured Harris on an article in its sports section out today. You can find a link to it on our Facebook page or our website. Harris is also among the league leaders in three-point percentages right behind Golden State's Steph Curry. His team put together a video to try to sway the NBA to invite Harris to partake in the three-point contest during the All-Star festivities next month. Man, they gotta put Joe in a three-point contest. Yeah, shooting is his life. Attention shoppers, the store will be closing in one minute. Ah, 
great to see a kid who grew up in Chelan making it big on an NBA stage full of giants. Coming up on the prep scores, uh, sports schedule that is for tonight. First of all, in girls basketball, Cashmere hosts Okanagan at 545. We'll back at Cascade, same time. Six o'clock, Eddie at Pateras Manson hosting Tenasket as the Caribou Trail League enters its final week. Here's how the girls stack up in the standings. Cashmere Pretty much already claimed the regular season title at 10 and 0. Omak and Chelan battling for second with Okanagan firmly in fourth. The top four teams advance to the district tournament. Still another week left in the B season, but here's where they are right now as far as the Central Washington 2B standings. Brewster is 12 and 1 atop the standings, but uh, you have three other teams close. Liberty Bell at 11 and 2, Waterville Mansfield 11 and 3, and Lake Roosevelt at 10 and 3. Top six teams advance from the CWB 2B advance to the by district tournament. Top four teams advance to districts out of the CWB 1B league. Pateras leads the way there with a 7 and 2 mark. Any on its heels at 6 and 1. Riverside Christian and Moses Lake Christian in good shape to make the district tournament. And while we're checking the standings, let's see where we are as far as the big nine girls. Sunnyside is the odds-on favorite to win the regular season title at 10 and 0. Moses Lake firmly in second at 8 and 2. So those teams would get a bye into the district tournament. The other four teams battling for the play-in games, West Valley, Davis, Eastmont, and Eisenhower. Wenatchee has three chances left to earn its first win of the season. Coming up tonight in boys basketball, there's a battle between the two top teams in the Caribou Trail League in Cashmere tonight where the 8 and 2 Bulldogs take on the 10 and 1 Okanagan Bulldogs. That game and the OMAC Cascade game start at 7.15. It's a 7.30 tip time for Enniot at Pateras and Tenasket and Manson. Here's the current standings in the Caribou Trail League. Okanagan first with Cashmere second. OMAC is solidly in third with Chelan fourth. The top four teams advance to the district tournament. Taking a look at the CWB 2B boys standings. Brewster is first at 12 and 1 with Oroville second at 11 and 2. Lake Roosevelt in third place followed by Tenasket, Manson and Bridgeport. Those look to be the top six teams to advance to the postseason. In the Central Washington 1B standings as of right now, Riverside Christian and Moses Lake Christian are chasing first place with Pateras third and Eddie at fourth. Again, the top four teams advance to the district tournament from that league. As far as the Big Nine race is concerned, Wenatchee remains atop the standings at eight and one with three games left. West Valley is second at seven and two. If it were to end today, those teams would get the first round by in the playoffs with Wenatchee hosting the district championships. The third through sixth place teams vying for a chance in the play-in for the district tournament, Moses Lake, Davis, Eastmont, and either Eisenhower or Sunny Sun. A reminder that we have sports on TV coming up tonight here on the NCW Life Channel. We'll replay the Eastmont Wenatchee Unified game from the Town Toyota Center back on January 4th. That'll be followed by the Wildcat and Panther Boys. It all starts at 7 o'clock. Then on Thursday, Hockey Night features Friday's Wenatchee Wild game against Langley. We'll be back live with Basketball Friday at Wenatchee as they'll play host to Eisenhower. The Big Nine doubleheader, the girls first at 545, the boys to follow at about 730. That's sports. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Grant, back to you. Thanks, Eric. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. Also, keep it right here on the NCW Life channel tomorrow morning for Wake Up Wenatchee Valley with host Dan Koontz. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. CW Life Channel is your home for local news, local weather, and events including live local high school sports. Watch inspiring local shows featuring local people. Don't miss Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Let's learn. Guada TV. Street Talk and Other Stuff. The 12th District. Life with Lisa. And the Arbiter of Stoke. NCW Life Channel is your local TV station. When you call Dix Heating and Air Conditioning, you get 35 years of experience and customer service in the Wenatchee Valley. Dick's friendly staff strongly believe in repairing before replacing and service all major brands of HVAC units. Dix Heating and Air Conditioning is your local independent trained comfort specialists, proudly serving all of North Central Washington.
Call 884-6444 today. Do you have a fun or interesting video you'd like to see featured here on the NCW Life channel? It's easy. All you have to do is send us an email at newsphotos at ncwlife.com.